Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this year's digital New York Baltic Film Festival. Um, my name is Yola Rosit and I'm the head of programs at the festival. It's a pleasure for us to um, this year be able to um, reach audiences across the US, not just in New York. Uh, we've just had two successful um, weekends behind us and this is our third package uh, that we're screening this weekend between the, tw uh, the 12th and the 15th of um, November. It is our looking inward and forward package in which we highlight kind of Baltic um, Baltic showcase films that might have screened at a few festivals before before now. Um, so the New York Film Festival is established in, or the New York Baltic Film Festival is established in 2018, and it is presented by Scandinavia House. It's organized by the Consulate General of Estonia, the Consulate General of Lithuania, and the Consulate of Latvia in New York. Financial support for the festival comes from the Estonian Film Institute, the National Film Center of Latvia, and the Lithuanian Film Center, with additional sponsorship by the Lithuanian Cultural Institute, the American Latvian Association, and LV100, as well as the Embassy of Latvia in the US. So like I mentioned, this is our third package of this season. Um, there are still tickets available. Uh, you can visit our website at balticfilmfestival.com. So tonight we're here for uh, a Q&A with the director Tanel Tom, who's the director of Truth and Justice. The conversation is moderated by Lucas Brasiskis, who um, some of you might remember from last year's festival. He did a, a few Q&As for us then as well. We're excited to have him back and, and look forward to this really interesting, uh, interesting Q&A. So over to you guys, Thomas and, and Lucas, please. Hi, Hi everyone. Uh, so th <laughs> um, thank you for the invitation and uh, really curious to watch all the films that uh, are screened this year in the festival. Uh, and uh, that was my pleasure actually to watch uh, Thomas' film and uh, I hope we'll have a nice and productive uh, discussion. Uh, and thank you, Thomas, for this great work. Uh, it's been, it was really pleasing experience. Uh, and uh, so I think I will start here for the question, which is like really simple one. And normally, probably my first question would be, how did you decide to make a film on this particular period? Uh, but since uh, we know that uh, this is an adaptation uh, and I read uh, of uh, that pretty popular and known uh, social epic uh, by Estonian uh, writer uh, whose name is Tamsara, uh, could you maybe tell us uh, uh, what uh, uh, draw you to adapt this particular epic and how the project started uh, why mm -hmm. and how did you decide to work on it mm -hmm. well actually yeah it, it, it's true that it is one of the fundamental uh, works of Estonian literature but uh, that wasn't the reason of course why i kind of wanted to tell that story and put it um, in the film language it's uh, for me it was the story itself and the main character when i read the book uh, for the first time i was affected by how contemporary the struggles of the main of, of the all of the novel's characters were actually and by how strongly they resonated with my own pursuit for self-fulfillment let's say and, and also that there's these themes and topics that are really, really very universal and to, I mean, to suppress one's feelings and not, not expressing what is happening inside you is a, is a very human thing to do. And that's, um, and, and, and the way the protagonist Andrus never ceases to seizes the non-stop drudgery and and uh, to acknowledge what he actually has achieved and and for getting to pay attention to his his own loved ones i mean this this tragedy of uh this human being and um th this is what really really fascinated me the the, the massive uh the massive character arc because because that's um this is massive for for that character, and and uh, and the saddest thing for me, or or the saddest thing is that it was all for the for the good cause for the family, and uh, 
but how easy is it actually to to lose yourself while blindly and stubbornly pursuing your dream and forgetting the most important in life which is your loved ones and and uh, family so this um, this journey was really you know, fascinating for me and uh, and how it started yeah i i uh, i read that although <laughs> this is a compulsory read at at uh, schools and everyone has to read it and study i i didn't it's a 550 page uh, book and i managed uh, not to read it but i right after graduating high school i felt really embarrassed that i hadn't read it and uh, and uh, it was my mission to read it one day like properly and i did it 10 years after graduating so exactly 10 years ago now when i was 28 i read it for the first time and then I was quite shocked how good the book was or how it, how it affected me. And, uh, and then I approached the uh, producer, Ivo, and, uh, and told him that, uh, you know, that this, I, I would like to tell that story. Well, let's, let's make it into a movie. And it was obviously a huge and massive thing that it's never been managed to be done in into a movie before and and uh, and uh, we knew that it will be a long and expensive process and but then then luckily it happened uh, mainly thanks to Estonian 100 project that the um, country in 2018 uh, celebrated our 100 years of anniversary and there was extra funding for making films and and uh, national competition for applying with projects and uh, and we were one of the lucky ones in the end who who got the finance to do the film uh yeah continuing from here uh given that the film uh, was uh, produced uh, uh, for this occasion i was thinking while watching it that uh, uh, it sort of deals with the history we want or not uh, and it deals with the history of estonia in in uh, the uh, end of 19th century but it also sort of resonates with the historical past that uh, uh, is shared by baltic states like lithuania latvia and uh, one of the things which is like very common and I, i'm from Lithuania originally I, I i i heard these discussions a lot about the national identity going on and on and there are a lot of takes uh, on it and it's very complex and complicated uh, thing given you know that uh, our countries were uh, uh, either under annexation or occupation uh, in different periods of history and this national identity was always struggling with like someone's imposed uh, uh, things so my my, 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 my my impression was that uh, uh, even though the film is very much structured as a drama um, about you know the main characters which we'll talk about in a few seconds but but I also had this impression that uh, uh, it's also about the identity and uh, 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 who makes you know you as you are and specifically I, I i i was thinking a lot about the ending of the film uh, where we have this uh, voiceover uh, uh, asking uh, literally uh, uh, you know what uh, one does when one loses the direction and and the answer is provided that uh, one has to go back to the beginning uh to find the answer so the questions for me like what 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 this beginning means for you uh do you do you did you want to think about the you know search of identity uh, uh like estonian identity do you and if yes do you want to speak to the present uh, do you do you want the film to send the message of source uh, to contemporary estonians and uh, yeah that's how this past relates to the present uh, mm -hmm. and what does it mean uh, to search for this identity well actually for i mean if you're talking about the identity then obviously i mean you're as, as a director your job is to tell the story and understand the characters and 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 make them relatable and and evoke some emotions and and all the rest 
that's the subtexts are hopefully there that yes the these I mean the the question of this is also probably partly the reason why it why the story when I read it, it affected me so much because I really I really um, I really saw myself in that character in in a way that this this the the, the more I tried to understand the main character the more he started to remind me of myself uh, this wasn't a nice feeling because this character is not a nice person in the end of the story but this is also say how i make films or i i lose myself in the work and and nothing else exists then and it's it's uh, obviously it's a very dangerous thing of course and and uh, but that's that's what really connected me to the main character and 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 whoever or or whatever type of uh, characters you're dealing with as as a director or a writer you have to love them all and in order to love them you have to understand them and uh, understand why they're like that why are they making these kind of choices not the right ones very often but uh, to understand them and hopefully i mean this is if it's somewhere there and 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 i've been told that yes that this when estonians look at the film very a lot of us kind of recognize ourselves there so this wasn't obviously my like main goal or objective while making the film that oh everyone has to kind of recognize uh, him or herself in it in the character but it's just this this is the dna i think you're uh, you're talking about but if we're talking about the voiceover that's in the beginning and in the end of the movie then then this is also actually simpler it's always really nice and there's nothing wrong about it like as kind of film critics they try to they try to and and this is their job as well to to put the meaning like uh, to to search for different possibilities for for meanings behind lines and this is what i really love about making films as well that it's like even if you have a uh, 300 uh, seat cinema and and uh, 300 people go in and and after the movies ended there are 300 different emotions come out from that cinema and they're all right there's nothing it's it's absolutely okay and this is this is what i love but behind those lines for me obviously i mean in order to because these lines have to be justified for the main character who is saying those lines obviously this main character is, is not saying these lines for the audience or for the oh let's think about our identity or so so in in that sense the the kind of the the simplest the most basic explanation would be that uh, he came to this place and and he had all these big dreams and and uh and he was thinking that he's doing it all for the family because of the love for his family but in the end he's he's not seeing the family anymore he's so obsessed with with uh, with his work and and uh, and he's he has pretty much lost everything he's ever had in a way just this place yes and it, this place looks bit better than it looked uh, 24 years uh, before but he's alone there and so that's the question that why what was the real reason what was the first kind of the what was the reason why did i actually come here what from where did i start so that this is like now why am i now haven't i done everything right I've been working and working, and but then yes, you've been working, but but uh, you've been forgetting why are you actually working, or it's not, uh, and that that's that's the thing that that um, that I mean that that this nonstop drudgery might really 
kill all the love you have and and it's it's uh, and 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 the main thing what was also the, the most important part of the theme is that like putting work before family eventually leads to loneliness and uh, that's what's where the tragedy is that he's he started doing it because of the family but while doing it he loses the family because he's at some point he's, he's not just cooperating with them in a way yeah mm -hmm. thank you thank you for such a detailed answer and i like let's talk a bit more about uh, historical recreation and and, and 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 still talking even about characters what uh, i found very interesting and uh, uh, I was uh, very um, sort of uh, positively surprised how uh, the portrayal of characters, how multi-angled the characters are, and specifically Andreas, uh, but you know, like other other characters. And I, I I got this feeling that you didn't want to you know uh, heroize or or you know like show uh, characters just one sided uh, as. Uh, unfortunately, as we know, some historical films do, and uh, they just, uh, uh, you know, follow one or another myth about the ideal uh, great past, and everything is uh, nice and 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 uh, one-sided. And I I had this feeling that the and Andreas and especially other also characters and specifically male characters, they're uh, very difficult, very complex, and sometimes very you know uh, unsympathetic even to some extent. It's difficult to identify five of them and even some egocentrism or even what we would call probably today masculinism is uh, uh, out there and you see that the characters by no means are heroes or, or like heroic characters but they're as human with a lot of weaknesses uh, so uh, uh, my, my question is like was it your intention to sort of uh, show that the past is complicated as the, as, as, as the present are by you know revealing bad and good sides of it uh, mm -hmm. and how did you deal with this uh, sort of dealing with the history which sometimes is very subtle uh, in in nation states a subtle topic because uh, someone like some people want to see it like uh, only golden image of the past without any <laughs> flaws yeah no i mean it, it's it's a very good question because uh, because this is this is actually what really this was the main thing that really fascinated me that this guy starts as a really nice person and ends up as a not so kind of in the beginning you kind of feel that that Piaro the neighbor is the villain uh, but as the film progresses uh, we see that it is actually Andres who is increasingly blind to his many faults and and uh, so that arc was something that I was really excited about and really that was one of the yeah, main things why I wanted to uh, tell that story and to really uh, emphasize or, or, or as I mean he's the main character and then the whole film stays on, on uh, that arc in a way that, that we should ask in the end of the movie the question that in the end, is he a better man than Piaro? I mean, we all change, and we and and the uh, the funny thing is obviously that we we do because of the environment and the people we meet and the events and conflicts that happen to us and and uh, around us and the choices we make, obviously. And although Piaro might be one of the most visible reasons i think for andres is changed but i think he's not the only one who pushes andres for for that kind of dramatic change or the, the land doesn't obey andres as well in fact the fact that he's still and uh, yeah the, the 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 fact that he still hasn't got an heir all this creates disappointment in this in this character and 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 uh, makes him ask that what am i doing what am i doing uh, wrong 
and uh, but it's I mean it's it's just the, the the problem of of that character is that he doesn't want to admit that there are bigger things and forces than us and uh, that you can't always bend nature and land and put the mountain where you where there's valley and see where there's a desert and and um, and so that change was yes really very important to me and also how he deals with bible and and uh, religion how he kind of abuses that book uh, not just like find, looking uh, for consolation but looking for justification for his deeds so this is a very unhealthy relationship with with bible he has and uh, and this i mean it's luckily i mean it's all there in the book but it's hinted in a very subtle way it's all there and it's but but the book is 550 pages long and a lot of most of the people who have read the book they don't remember that this guy becomes such a monster and this was something that i knew that oh a lot most of people will be really very surprised by seeing it but it's all in the book you can find all these chapters where He's beating his wife more than once in the book, but it's just in just a one kind of small sentence being said that, oh, then, then he also beat uh, her wife because of that and that, and then we're already a next kind of topic or something. So it's easy to miss that. But if you put that in a film, you're physically seeing it and you're putting in, like, um, you're seeing it for, two or five, four minutes, then it definitely leaves a kind of impact on you. And, uh, and I knew that. So this is, this is something I was really kind of waiting for, for that reaction and for these, uh, for these uh, quarrels that, oh, that, that there's been like, uh, there have been people from the audiences and that saying, no, he wasn't like that. He, he never did that. And I said, Oh yes, he did. Go, go home. Take the book, and you will find those places. And of course, they do find those <laughs> bits. But as a, as a as a writer and a director, for me, these small moments in the book that was gold, because especially like as like looking from the characters' point, like uh, not not from the characters' point of view, but from the writer's point of view, looking at at the characters' arc these moments are the most important moments in a person's life i mean in a in a character's life these this when when why or how does that happen how this this first time with when you raise your hand against your wife this has to be a, it's it's a big e emotional event for that character, uh, yes, it might, it's just, I don't know, it happened, but for us, as an, uh, who are we observing, this is a huge moment. It's a next step into, towards something. We don't know where that might end, but, and obviously finding these snippets and these moments I, I created from these turning points for the film. And, but in the book, they're not so, emphasize and the book is also it's the book is very episodic as i said it's so long there's like loads of subplots it's uh it doesn't have a such a clear uh arc so but in order to tell a story filmically you ha you need cause and effect um you have to have cause and effect uh, events and 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 all that in order to especially if you want to keep the audience watching it till the end so there, there has to be that something always coming and and it's growing from the previous event so that was a uh, kind of that was uh, very interesting and and uh, and huge work I had to do first the creating the structure for the film and, and choosing the events I want to 
talk about and how to create these connections in between those events that in the book there's like most of them there there are no connections there's just episodes and uh, but but yeah so that was all really kind of fascinating and took many many years to write thank you for again uh, 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 such a comprehensive answer and uh, I, I'm yeah I'm really fascinated uh, how reflective you are about you know the past and uh, you know in terms of what you said about the script writing and 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 putting the structure there uh, since you really thought about you know what the image of the past uh, could tell us in the present instead of just recreating whatever ideal or mythical image of a past and that's really interesting and i think we need that more in, in historical filmmaking but in this relation and coming more to you know the production side which i think some people also interested in usually uh, i want to ask a bit more about the production uh, of the film and you talked about the script writing and the building up the uh, you know, uh, narrative arc. Uh, what about the shooting of the film? Uh, it uh, seems, you know, one of the important topic in the film we have discussed already, you, you mentioned it, you know, the man's relation to the land. And we have uh, the majority of action happening in a rural part of uh, Estonia. You also, I believe, uh, try to recreate uh, more or less some historical landscapes, but we also have a lot of, uh, you know, nat natural landscapes. Uh, could you tell more about, you know, this uh, basically shooting part and mm -hmm. how did you decide to shoot in that particular location uh, what did you do there and um, yeah there are a lot of seasons covered right so it seems it took a lot of time as well to shoot the film right yeah yeah so it was a yeah it was a very very ambitious uh, project obviously and because uh, we shot over a year and a half because we had, I mean, obviously not every day. So we we had seventy five shooting days, but they were spread over over year and a half, or, or almost two years, because we needed all the seasons, and just, not just. And uh, so there was a lot of kind of set construction and and uh, big crew, and uh, I mean it is a period piece, so obviously had to build a lot. And uh, and there's a lot of VFX actually in the film, and also as the story takes place over 24 years, and I I wanted to use the same actors throughout, so we also used prosthetic makeup, very difficult one, like that was in the end like four hours to apply for the main character, and uh, every day, and uh, so. Yeah, it was very ambitious. And obviously these landscapes, I mean, these, these places exist, like, but in different parts of Estonia. So it's all put digitally together. This hill with those houses that we actually built, so like one set of farmhouses the, for the main character, this is all real. We built that, the, the neighbor's place is actually, like in the yard when you're with the camera in the yard it's it's shot somewhere else and and uh, and that is being created digitally on that hill the neighbors um, farmhouses and all the uh, the bog and marshes around the hill this is all put in later digitally because obviously if, if even if there would have been somehow like miraculously a hill in the middle of uh, marshes somewhere, then how the hell do you get there? And also it's, we, we had like story demanded so specific things that it's a lonely hill where there's only like two sets of farmhouses and how, so we just had to find, that was already a really difficult uh, thing to, to find an empty uh, hill somewhere in Estonia, where there's like, a, at least from one side, it's also empty at least for one kilometer so that you could shoot a wide shot from somewhere. Because if it's, there are trees or something around it, you cannot shoot a wide shot of it. And also that, that there's no 
no, I don't know, uh, electricity lines or, or, or some other things. Of course, it, it's impossible. But even that small thing that finding from Estonia a hill, uh, which is empty, that we could put something on it, and, and from one side, at least, that we have uh, one kilometer so we can shoot the wide shot, we found it only, it was exactly by the border of Latvia. So when when my mobile phone went to Latvia network always like uh, this, so it was like we literally we saw Latvia from from that hill and this this the posts of the 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 border posts. So it was and and it that was like three hundred and ten kilometers from Tallinn. So that made as well things much more complicated, and so. And I mean, yeah, there were loads of things, plus animals, children, uh, all these elements and, and, and weather also. I mean, we had, to, we had to postpone twice the winter shoot. I mean, luckily, finally the snow came, but, but it just, there wasn't any snow, but I knew that I need snow. I need to have a proper, winter in that movie and so uh, luckily the snow came in the end and we managed to shoot the very nice kind of winter scenes but uh, there was loads of us there's so many elements and also like the scheduling was nightmare like also like over one and a half years and then you the actors are working in theater and in different theaters how were you getting you have three uh, professional actors in a scene and they're all from different theater and 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 how are you finding that one day where they actually can all be on the set and uh, so it's uh, but this is filmmaking I mean this is um, that's how <laughs> I, I'm not the only one who's kind of dealing with those things that's that's life and that's part of the fun I guess yeah, in terms of one more element uh, uh, of the film, which I found interesting, uh, like uh, the, the, the storytelling is uh, like very impressive, but uh, so to say, following the more or less traditional, uh, you know, pattern, I like sort of mm -hmm. continued editing and so on and so forth. But what impressed me a lot was the soundtrack, the score mm -hmm. for the film, which sounded uh, so to say, way more experimental than the uh, way the story is told. Uh, and uh, it, uh, could you tell a bit more about the soundtrack and how did you decide to use this kind of soundtrack? Mm. Uh, like whose score is it? Uh, uh, probably you had someone uh, composing it, right? Uh, and uh, yeah. yeah, this yeah, I had the... the sound and image. Yeah, yeah. I had the, we had the composer Michael Silmer, who's, who's a great composer who I've worked with before on some kind of shorter projects, and and we also used um, some church music or classical music from one other Estonian com young composer, the, the choir music. There's three times we hear, I think choir or not. We hear twice choir and and once there's one piano piece as well. It's just, I mean, it's, I, I can only say that I, I, I work very, very closely always with my composer. because so I've studied some music as well in past and, and been singing in uh, voice choir as a, as a kid for like 14 years. And so this, this isn't a world which is un unfamiliar to me so I, I i i know the musical terms and it's 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 rather easy to communicate with my composer and for me it's it's very very important always who is the composer and and what's the what does the film need i mean because it's always <clears throat> you are serving the story and and uh, and uh, and the music has to has to support that and sometimes you don't need music at at all and you might 
realize it after the composer has written like already seven versions that weren't any not not good but but right for that part and then you realize at some point in the mixing stage that oh actually we don't need here like anything and and the composer has to understand that it's okay this is part of the process part of the job and and Michael is is great is really a great movie f film composer because it's it's a really different type of composing is a composing for film for for I work sometimes also with composers who are not film composers and who haven't kind of studied uh, composing for film and it's most of the time it's it's really difficult because they think that oh I want to create my art and you just put it and and use it there because no I created it this is how I feel but no you have to work very very closely with the <clears throat> with the director and and understand what what the story what that scene what that character what we exactly need in that moment and this you might need that for seven seconds and 21 frames so you also have to be able to put it in exact um, kind of time frame so it's not an easy and simple thing so it's it's uh uh yeah but 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 um, back to the main question, actually, you asked that, that how we try to approach. I, I remember one of the first meetings with the composer was that we were discussing with Mikkel and I said that I would like to use these kind of that, that I know that I want to use percussion definitely for some of the scenes, but not just drums, but let's try to find some earthy materials like let's record stones and and wooden sticks and and so on and, and let's kind of obviously they're a bit kind of uh, like processed later uh, digitally but the original source material is like just two two stones being hit against each other or or wooden sticks and this is really this these elements are from that world and so this this is really and and other thing that I knew that oh I like to hear uh, cellos that no no brass instruments in that film so there's just this piano yes and there's lots of cellos violas violins so string instruments and 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 then. Um, percussion elements sometimes also of course you're using the sticks and stones and you are adding quietly some other wider drums at some point maybe as well but but uh, but like for example in a lot of in in many scenes with Piaru we hear the wooden sticks so it's kind of his element the stones are Andres's elements so this is kind of really fun to come up with and then try and experimenting that whether it's 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 just it's something anyway good film music is something that the audience shouldn't necessarily kind of uh, hear or it's it's because it's it's all you're looking at the film not not listening oh this is a nice piece of music that's now playing but and it's all but it's all works on like on a subconscious level or unconsciously that uh, but yeah working on these elements that i think no one notices that oh with andres we're like hearing these stones but with with the uh, pr or wooden sticks but for us and it still i think works on a subconscious level somehow that that you it's just the filmmaker really believe the director and all the like the, the the big crew obviously as a filmmaker you have to make choices and and you as an audience you feel that whether there's a whether the filmmakers have done it on purpose and they've decided you might not kind of analyze or even uh, think about it 
why exactly or but but it's just it's uh i believe that it's in kind of controlled storytelling or if 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 i'm it's my responsibility to lead the audience to lead them through certain emotions or at least give them a chance to feel certain emotions and no don't want to tell 100 percent that you have to feel that emotion here and that emotion there and not this emotion but but at least give that uh opportunity and uh and but if you're if you're not doing it then the film or the story doesn't have focus and it's not it's it's not effective Think. And that my job is to tell the story in the most effective way and find these tools and how to tell that scene or, or that moment or, or, or make that, I don't know, give a possibility for a certain type of emotion in, in that scene. What am I using for this scene? And uh, there's so many like ways to do that. And it's uh, and it's this is what I love about making films that it's it's all the art forms put together and you have so many uh, tools and buttons and yeah amazing amazing uh, just uh, to going to the end of the discussion one question is is it is it true that a film uh, is is this like the most expensive Estonian film ever made? I read it somewhere. It's, I mean, it's yes and no. I mean, state money wise, uh, yes, it's it's. Uh, but there are some co-productions, like in Estonian co-productions, that the budget is bigger. But uh, but yeah, for the state money and and actually, in a way, yes, I think it 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 is so far kind of the most expensive, right? Yeah. So I have a follow up question in regard to film industry in Estonia because it seems that uh, the film is a huge production and not very often. Uh, we and I, by we, I mean, including Latvians uh, and Lithuanians, have like this big budget, uh, huge uh, uh, budget films being made. And, 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 you know, like you talked about all the details you had to work on, like how, you know, huge scale was of the production. And, and then I know that you also competed for the Oscar. Do you, do you feel that there's some kind of changes happening in, in, in this particular case, Estonian film industry? Do you think that there will be more films that are really, um, you know, uh, trying to, 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 to reach as a broad audience as they can, but also to make as a, you know, accessible as, uh, uh, you know, quality films as possible and mm -hmm. in, 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 in this way, what's going on in terms of the industry or was it just a more exception from the rule? Uh, what your... No, I mean, I, I think it's, it's definitely changing and it's been changing already for the past 10 years. The, stone, the more films uh the country makes the more different they are the more different uh, directors get a chance and possibility to tell the story the the, the way they tell and uh, and uh yes i think it's 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 definitely it's been already changing and there's uh, there have been these bigger films now almost every year at least one film that's that's either it's kind of based on some kind of a classical book or story or or and and the period period drama or with a bit of a bigger budget and it's uh, it's uh, it's a very good thing because it's also these these films I mean we for a lot for a long time there were only really only if there were so few films being made, there were like mainly only very small art films. And then and, and there's, you cannot tell a certain type of a, a, a story or you just, it's, it's like, for example, with this, with Truth and Justice, I remember when I 
first time when I went to Ivo, my producer, and told him that that I want to make this movie, and and the, the, right that at, at that moment I also said that it's two two more things. It's gonna be two and a half hours long, and it's gonna it's got, not gonna be cheap. Because I wanna like because the book is really epic, and I really felt that if I'm gonna tell that story, it has to be at least tried to be as big as, as the world as it's in the book. I cannot do it as a small kind of indie indie production that it's just like to like a man and uh, his wife in a kind of one small room and talk, talking through like it, it's not that story so it's like in order to tell already this is the very like just your your main like uh, most important novel for Estonians but just in order to put that on a screen you need money if you want to do it uh, properly so it's it's not about uh, there's no explosions in that movie. There's no like thousands of army men <laughs> running or anything, but it's just the period piece is always uh, more expensive than something that's kind of contemporary. And um, it's luckily Eastern Europe where we all kind <laughs> are from and, and live, it's, it's uh, it's not as bad as as it was uh, twenty years ago or twenty uh, five or thirty years ago, and we and the, the everything goes the the production value and and also the 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 craft and also the, the, the this that so many huge foreign productions are shooting in Lithuania and also in Estonia and Latvia. This shows something. It really shows that the level of um, professionalism has is, is, is there where it needs to be. Otherwise, they wouldn't come here. They wouldn't use our crews and our people. Now it's, it's a problem that always someone is shooting from, I don't know, from Finland or from Germany or, or from somewhere and we don't have any crews because they're working on foreign films. So it, it's a nice problem to have <laughs> in a way. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I think it's, it's been changing already for a while and it's, it's getting obviously better and better. And we, we, we are part of, uh, we want to be part of the, kind of the world film or then we yeah have to do all kind of all kinds of films it's just yeah it's uh, so I, I i'm happy <laughs> to be here and making films in estonia so yeah uh, thank you it's, it's time i think to wrap it up i have a final question uh and you can choose to answer it or not, but do you want to tell us more about your next projects or like the projects you are working now? I mean, it's a bit uh, strange to ask about now because we're all in the pandemic time, which I know we have, you know, problematic for the filmmakers to shoot or to work on something, but, uh, but are some projects like uh, in, in production you're uh, involved? And if you want to say something about that, please do, I think that spectators would like to know yeah. what to expect next. <laughs> well, yes, there is, there is one project that's been actually older than, than uh, that I've been working on for more than uh, on Truth and Justice, a project that was actually supposed to be my first feature, but, but we didn't get the financing together. And then I, at some point I had to postpone it because of Truth and Justice. And this is something completely different from it's. It's not a. It's it's if if truth and justice happen like in like more than hundred years ago, then this next project, this this story takes place fifty years into future. So it's a it's a sci-fi drama with only four characters and it takes place in the middle of an ocean the whole movie uh over over a couple of weeks and it's like in a in this rusty tower 
and uh, military outposts. So it's if a previous film took place on a hill in the middle of a swamps, then next one will be in a tower in the middle of an ocean. So that's the that's the connection. But um, but yeah, and hopefully we're shooting it uh, next year, spring in in starting in May. And uh, yeah, this is a project that I've been working on for a long, long time. All, it will be 11 years in uh, May. So, and hopefully, who knows, uh, hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll be shooting it next year, finally. Yeah, well, me, me too. I, I keep my fingers crossed and looking forward to the new film. And thank you for joining us. Uh, I think that's a great addition to the festival. And uh, yeah, it was thank nice you. to talk to you. Yeah. yeah, thank you all. And thank you for, thank you people who, whoever, who's, who's watching it. If there's even one person, then uh, thank you for <laughs> doing that. All right, thank you everyone for watching. Um, you can still catch the other two films if you haven't seen them. It's Olex by uh, Jurs Kursets and The Lawyer by Roma Zabrowskis. Um, and join us next year for, I don't know, the new format that we'll figure out then hopefully in person. Um, thank you all of you for, for joining and talking. It's been really interesting.